Hey there, I am back for another edition of Let's Talk Change, where I'm hanging out around the proverbial water cooler answering your questions around organizational change management. Now, every organization has their own approach to driving change. And honestly, there is no one right way or wrong way to drive change. It's really about understanding what works for your organization. But I do think it's important to consider the different types of strategies um, to help determine the right one for your organization. So I got this question and I thought it would be great uh, to bring to this chat series. And it's what is a push versus a pull change strategy and which one is better? This uh, person said, you know, my organization is finally building a change practice and they wanna make sure they're getting started on the right foot. So let's discuss. Now the best way for me to describe a push versus a pull strategy is to put it in a table with characteristics, some examples, and some typical results that I have seen. Now again, I want to call out, maybe your organization really thrives from a push strategy. Um, these are just some tactics, tactics and results that I've seen. Uh, personally, if you have different results, add them to the comments. Um, would love to hear what you think. So when you think of a push strategy, usually this is something um, that is done as an afterthought. So you have your whole change, whatever that change is that you're working on, you wait until everything is done and then you push it out to your users. And it's basically a very direct message, right? There's little feeling or empathy. It's, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's what you need to do. Now go do it, right? So it's a very, you know, pushing the information as the name indicates out to your users. And usually when you add a value statement of why you're making the change, it's usually something like, hey, we're making this change because it's going to save us a lot of money or it's going to increase productivity or something along the lines of what's in it for the organization top down. All right, so it's a very top down driven uh, type of exercise. So you might hear things in your organization such as rip and replace. Well, we're just swapping out one technology for another, or we're going to send an email with a link to some training and we think that will get users to adopt this change. Um, other ones saying, you know what, we're just gonna deploy it. People don't really have an option, right? We're just gonna push it out and they'll have to use it. Um, and the last one, which I love is the do as I say, not as I do, which basically is saying that it's people telling you, the people being your decision makers, your IT folks, your HR, saying, this is what we want you to do. We're not gonna do it, right? But we want you to do it, right? So again, it's manipulating people to do what you want them to do. And usually what happens is people kind of feel forced, like users are kind of taken aback by it a little bit and saying, wait a minute, like you're just telling me what I have to do, right? They get upset, they push back, they resist. Right, they call your help desk, they're not happy, right? So there's all of these things that you were hoping happened because you tell someone to do something and the reverse happens. So if I want to use a personal type of example, right, think about when you were a child or if you have children or you're around children at home, one of the very first words that you learn is no, right? Children, they don't like to be told what to do, right? So the minute you say, go to bed, eat your dinner, they immediately push back, right? And it's again, it's you telling them to do something. Um, so that's kind of what a push strategy is. Anytime in your life when you feel kind of that icky feeling inside when someone's just eking at you to do something um, that you maybe don't wanna do or you simply don't understand why you would do it. So you push back and you resist. That is what a push strategy is. Now, when you think about a pull strategy, Think about when you, you draw someone in, right? Pulling them into you. It's about making them want to do something. This is when you make user readiness part of your change plan, right? So it's integral from the beginning. You take time to understand how is this going to impact my users, right? You understand a, I, what I like to call a day in the life. Like how is this going to affect them? And you approach things from a more empathetic standpoint. So you're really approaching it from a, you know, what's in it for me from the end user, right? The value you put out there is from the user standpoint, right? And it creates that desire. It creates that want to want to make that change, right? And it could be reward-based, right? Again, using the example of, you know, children at home, like, hey, if you eat all your broccoli, you, you know, you get to stay up 
10 minutes later or get to watch your favorite show. So it could be reward based. It could be just explaining to them why, like what's the value? Why is this good for you to do? Um, and then they feel like they're making the decision. Even though the outcome's kind of the same, they kind of feel like they're making the decision to want to do it. So just saying, look, we know change is hard. We know you have a lot on your plate. We're here, we're gonna get through this together. We are in this together, right? Better together, very common theme. Um, you see all over the news and social media today, organizations wanting the entire world to know, you know, with this epidemic, we're, we're in this together, right? And, you know, help us help you. Tell us what you need. Tell us how we can help you be successful. So it's engaging. It's bringing people into the conversation. They feel like they're part of the solution. They get excited to change. Um, they want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And as a result, they're happier. They're willing to work harder and get you more results. And then resistance gets lower. So let me give you a clear cut example uh, to explain this a little bit more. A picture of towels, right? What does that mean? So I'm sure we've all stayed in hotels at some point, maybe not right now, but at some point in our past. And, you know, you always see those little table tent cards, right, in a hotel room. And there's a message that comes with that table tent card. And it says something along the lines of, please help us conserve water by reusing your towels. Together we can save the environment, right? It's It talks about how, you know, the depletion of water and, you know, usable resources and renewable resources and all of that. And it's asking you to please reuse your towels, hang them up. Um, now, what if that same table tent card said, you know what, washing towels costs us a whole lot of time and money. We have to pay for detergent, our water bill goes up. So you know what, just reuse your towels, right? Totally different outcome, or sorry, totally same outcome that you're expecting, totally different message. So you do kind of see the difference between a push versus a pull strategy. Um, so let's take a look um, at some of the things, some of the tips that I have for you in moving forward with a push versus a pull strategy or considering the right strategy for your organization. So the first thing you want to keep in mind, um, whether you're doing a push versus a pull strategy, um, your tone, your timing, perspective, and the activities you ask users to do are what's going to inform your push versus a pull, right? So look at the example I just gave on the towels. Like, what is your tone in the message? Is it, hey, here, we're doing this and you have to do it too? Um, or is it, hey, we understand and we'd like you to come along with us, right? So what is the tone? What about timing? Are you waiting until the last possible minute to tell people what's happening so they feel like they have to react in a negative way? Or are you giving them ample notice so that they can have time to digest the, the information and ask the questions um, that are coming to mind. What perspective are you giving, right? That value add perspective. Are you telling users that you want them to make a change so your organization can save a boatload of money? Or are you saying, this is gonna help you, you know, get your job done faster so you can spend more time with your family? You know, what is the perspective and the message that you're giving them? And are you really offering the appropriate activities that they can take, the steps and actions that they can take um, to start implementing the change on their side? So think about those things because that is really what's gonna help inform a push versus a pull strategy. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? You can have a push approach. If you're saying, look, this is how we operate, but you can still do a push approach where you're, um, it, you're kind of a little um, forefront in your message, but you add some of those undertones of, you know, being a little empathetic to users or saying, you know, we just have to do this. It's going to save our company money. And maybe that's a valid point because, you know, times have changed and your organization needs to save money to stay afloat. So maybe saving money is a good message, but putting the perspective around it of here's how it's going to help all of us. So you could have a push approach with some pull components and vice versa. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. It's really thinking through what works best um, for your organization. The one thing to keep in mind, and this is what I've seen time and time again, right? We've, we all know this phrase, it's very difficult to make a second first impression. If you push something out to users and it just goes completely sideways and they push back, it's, you know, and they're just angry because of the way that the message was conveyed and they didn't have enough time. It's, you know, it's pretty challenging to go back 
you know, and say, mm, yep, sorry, let's start over. Um, but here's what I recommend. We're human beings, right? And if you get that, and this could actually work to your advantage, because if you do kind of have that push approach and then it backfires on you and you say, uh oh, we need to take a step back here, own your actions. Go back to your users and say, oops, we goofed. I see it all the time on you know, social media sites, like, oh, we made a mistake, or hey, we're gonna correct that, or hey, we heard you. We heard that you know, this is a really hard change for you and we want to make it right. People understand that nobody is perfect. And honest, honestly, people respect honesty. I can say that honestly, people respect honesty, you know, more than they just want you to be right all the time. So own your actions, you know, apologize, go back to your users. If you did, you know, let's say have a push strategy that didn't really work as you planned, or you did a push with some pull tactics, whatever your approach was, if you're getting feedback from your users that it's not really resonating with them in any shape or form, own it. Say, great, you're right. We heard you. We listened, right? Vulnerability can actually build trust and it makes you seem more human and more relatable to your end users. Um, in a previous video, I talked about running a user pilot. That is a great way to test out your approach. So if you're not sure, if you're saying, hmm, I don't know if this approach is going to resonate with our user base, test it out as part of your pilot. A pilot is a great way to validate your message, your timing, your training, your support. So you might find that your user pilot says, hold on a second, you know, this message is not going to land well with the rest of the user base. All right, so make sure when you're doing a user pilot, you're using the exact messaging that you plan on using um, on a broader scale. And then really make sure you're proactive. Um, if you're planning or once you're planning on rolling something out to your entire organization, take moments in time, certain milestones to check in with your users, um, make sure that things are going well, get any feedback so that you can course correct before things get too out of hand. So if you're falling down, you know, one strategy and, you know, I'll use the reverse example. Maybe you try to pull strategy, right? You try to be really empathetic and laid back and, you start rolling this out and you're realizing nobody's taking action here. <laughs> We're not getting any results, right? Maybe you have to put your foot down a little bit more, right? And again, this goes back to, you can have a blend of these approaches. So check in with your users, look at your data, look at your metrics and your goals and course correct um, as you need to. So really important to bring your project back on track. The most important tip I can give you here is to really be sincere. Um, users can smell that phony sales pitch, right? Use car salesman type of approach from a mile away. So if you try to be empathetic and it really comes across um, as being fake, it's almost going to have a worse effect than if you were just doing a push strategy saying, look, this is who we are and here's what we're doing. So really be sincere. And if you're going to do the pull approach, truly understand your user base, make sure the message will resonate with them. Again, all of that can be easily validated as part of your user pilot. So as you can see, there are quite a few differences between a push strategy versus a pull strategy. And I'd love to hear what you think. So do you think your organization takes more of a push tactic or a pull tactic or maybe something in between? Feel free to add to the comments below. Maybe share something that's worked really well for your organization or a lesson learned maybe that you've experienced. And if you're looking for some additional change strategies, wondering what else can you do, maybe some other things you're doing that might not be as efficient and what you can do about them, check out my webinar called Common Change Strategies. And as you know, we have more videos coming. So subscribe to this channel to kind of keep those front and center in your list when you log into YouTube. And if you have a question you'd like me to consider for an upcoming video, just enter that question at aka.my slash question. So that's it for now. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.